Okay. Hello. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. So, um, as a continuation of um, uh, tip your your camera down just a tad. Uh, as a continuation on on just our themes and making sure that not only are we really helping people with um, uh, you know learning and and learning about our body and uh, it's also being given the tools to make sure that we can uh, help ourselves. And so, what, the topic that we wanted to do was uh, you know when does our immune system get compromised and if it is compromised, what we can we do to strengthen it? And uh, uh, you know, in, in in the times that we are right now, when we're actually doing this recording, it's uh, March 2020, and so we're talking about huh 20. Okay. May. Oh, oh, Mar oh, you're right. <laughs> May 2020, and um, we're talking about that a lot of people have been um, staying home and uh, in in, in uh, isolation, as I call it, in lockdown. <laughs> Um, and so uh, we're thinking we're actually protecting our immune system, but that's not actually what's happening. So um, you definitely wanted to talk about that, like what is happening when we stay in our house? Is are, are, are you know that people are like, aren't we protecting our immune system? And it's really kind of just the opposite, right? Yeah, I mean your immune system is a living system, and living systems need things in their environment to respond to in order to grow. Um, just like we, when we're growing up as kids, we need to socialize with other kids in order to grow. You know, we need to encounter problems and learn how to solve those problems in order to get the tools that we're going to need later in life. So your immune system is really the same way. It needs to encounter challenges in order to figure out how to stay healthy in, in the process of those challenges. And, you know, there's been studies that show that kids that grow up on farm that farms that are in the soil all the time, that are around animals all the time, they have the healthiest immune system because they've been given, their immune system has been constantly been giving challenges, whether it's microbial challenges, whether it's allergen uh, challenges. And so that's how your immune system grows, becomes healthy and learns. It develops all the chemistries in the memory that it needs in order to respond, um, um, you know, on, on an ongoing basis and to be healthy. Right. Bring down your thing just a tad. I actually think a really good um, a really good uh, um, example of that is is when uh, pre premature babies preemies mm -hmm. uh, are in isolation and they have the weakest immune system and not because they're premature but because they didn't have anyone to help with their uh, regulation they didn't have anything that really uh, challenged their system and of course that's part of having them in a NICU is is to try to keep their environment sterile but that that that's learned and so you know it, it becomes very challenging for kids who who were in the NICU um, because their body learned to uh, not defend itself Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, um, you can, you know, you can think of those that, that in any terms, you don't have to think of it just as the immune system. You can think of it on, in, on many levels. If you're living a bubble, when you go out of the bubble, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to respond. You don't know how to read the cues. You know, you don't have like that mirror uh, that you can kind of reflect to know how to respond in, in different situations. And our immune system is no different, um, you know, the way that when the immune system comes across a pathogen, for instance, one of the cells, chemistries that it makes, it's one of its T cells, it's white blood cells, are actually called memory cells. And what they do is they hold the memory of what the immune system has been um, exposed to in the past. So when they have another exposure, they say, oh, I know this, I know what to do. And when you're living in a sterile bubble, when, right. you're, when you're not being exposed, what happens is that your system will, that your immune system will then downregulate and um, become less effective. Right, right. I actually really like that uh, analogy. I like the analogy of, um, you know, that it's, it's learned just like anything else. If you live in a bubble and you, 
and you go out, you don't know the cues and you don't really know how to perceive your environment. And actually everything's very overwhelming. I, I know that there's sometimes where people can experience that. I, um, as you obviously know, I was sick for a really long period of time and I was in a hospital for three months. Going outside was overstimulating. Mm -hmm. And I even just remember, you know, living in Philadelphia in the city and living in Vermont. You know, when I lived in Vermont and hadn't been back to Philadelphia for years, being in the city was very, uh, very stimulating, very overstimulating. And so it's just overwhelming for the nervous system when it's experiencing something that it's not, it's not acclimated to or used to. So I, I really like that analogy that it's like anything else. It's your body either knows how to respond to it or not. And if it's not exposed, it does not know how to respond to pathogens or, you know, external, external things. Yeah. And, and that's a good point about that, you know, that your experience and when you were released and you have all this stimuli, you have auditory, you have visual, you have, you know, olfactory, you have all the stimuli that's suddenly rushing in and you haven't had to filter that out. And you're, so your body kind of forgets how to do that. And then it becomes overwhelming and probably very confusing. And there's a lot of like autoimmune conditions are immune system confusion, basically. You know, so it's not just the down regulation of not knowing how to respond, but there's also that confusion that as what well, factor as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, more makes it more challenging for like if we're talking specifically immune system, like where we are now. What what we want to do is to one bring awareness that um, being in a confined environment compromises the immune system, so that we're more vulnerable when we go out. But we're also talking about um, you know what 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 we can do about that. Right. So you know supporting your immune system during that process of then starting to expose. Yeah, don't wait, right? System. Sorry, something just flew in front of my face. Um, yeah, so there's, there's certain nutrients that not only strengthen the immune system, but to help to regulate the immune system and the way that it responds, like mushrooms. Um, certain forms of mushrooms, mataki, lion's mane, uh, mushrooms, are good immune, immune regulators. So it's not just boosting your immune function, it's helping with any confusion within the immune system as well. Mm -hmm. So using certain immune system boosting nutrients as well as immune system regulators is, is really a good idea, I think. So it helps sort it out. It helps right. sort out what it should be doing. Like, oh, th this is a problem, I need to handle this, that's coming into my body, you know, like, like a healthy immune system, we're exposed to viruses all the time. And so a healthy immune system, doesn't, it doesn't have to sort it out. It's not confused. It knows that, uh, you know, I need to handle this and not let, it, not let it get carried away in my body and get rid of it versus right. oh, I need this. So lion's mane? Yeah, vitamin D is, you know, if you can, like one of the ways you can break down the immune system is you have the guardians that watch out for some kind of threat, and then you have the part of the immune system that responds to that threat. And confusion can happen anywhere or multiple places, but whether it's the perception of threat versus non-threat, whether it's the power of response, or whether it's communication between those two kind of parts of the immune system, you can have breakdown anywhere along that line. Vitamin D is really good with the in helping with the communication, the signaling, um, between different parts of the immune system, for instance. Right, right. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I think that that's one of the videos that, that um, I put out and that we talked about was, was uh, I mean, there's just a, there are a lot of different things that people could do, but there are some key things that stimulate the immune system. And yeah. um, so uh, exercise is actually really good for stimulating the immune system as well, because it brings up the biochemistry. Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, sleeping well, because mm -hmm. poor sleep compromises the immune system. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about like being able to finally be able to go out into our, our, in our, our environment and, and, and connect with people, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm certainly, you know, not worried about my own immune system because I know that this is not an issue for me, but a lot of people are. A lot of people are really having this state of fear and thinking that, um, 
you know, and it's a, a lot of misconception about how viruses actually work and, you know, that, that, that they're not actually live and it takes a lot and it's not, it's not like you can, it's not like someone can sneeze and walk through it an hour later and actually be in this bath of virus. It doesn't work that way, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who are really nervous. So, um, in, in, in the things that they can do to help boost their immune system, what, and so what you're, what you're saying is, is that even if you're in isolation, you can still take some things that will help your body to not be confused when it goes out into the environment. That's correct. Okay. And vitamin D is one of those as well. Cause that light. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So it's not really just about boosting the immune system that vitamin D actually helps your body to sort out um, danger and non-danger. So vitamin D does a lot of really interesting things. So vitamin D, um, really helps with the communication between the different parts of the immune system that have to communicate in order to have an appropriate immune response. Like you can't have an army of people that respond to some threat without their, the communication between different parts of the army or different people within the army. They have to communicate or they're all gonna be running in different directions and, and, and have no defense. So vitamin D, it helps, really helps with that communication as well as the, as well as uh, like lion's mane and, um, and, um, and talking mushrooms as well. Um, so that's kind of the, that's kind of the um, communication part of vitamin D. Vitamin D also, our, um, our cells, um, groups of cells, should have some kind of adherent quality. So they're not, there's not like spaces between our cells, for instance. They, they should adhere to each other to some degree. And when that doesn't happen, when we do have spaces between our cells, it weakens that cell and um, allows things to get into the cell, uh, disrupts, again, that communication between the cells. Vitamin D helps that adherent property to cells. But, and that cell can be an immune system cell as well as any other cell of the body. So it helps to support our immune system in that way as well. Um, so um, th those are, that's kind of two ways that vitamin D really does support our immune system. Okay. Okay, all right. So uh, what, what, else, uh, um, what else would you recommend as far as just generally speaking, you know, um, in being able to just kind of get it and have a little bit of confidence on, on uh, you know, on, making sure that we weren't compromising our immune system, but actually um, being able to get out and thrive and not have, not have it, re, not a, have our environment wreak havoc on us. Anything, anything else? Well, vitamin C is a good immune booster. That's easy to do. Lutosomal being the op, optimal way of taking, and that's the same, that's the case with vitamin D should be liposomal as well. Right. Meaning so, it's with the fat suspension. Yes. Yeah, so right. Liposomal, uh, meaning the oil suspension, because vitamin C is a very fragile vitamin and uh, it doesn't last really in our environment. So um, whether it be especially sunlight. So if we're uh, getting a vitamin C and it's in a jar, as soon as we open that, that it's being exposed to light, it's killing the vitamin C. So that liposomal or oil-based uh, suspension is really important to help not only hold the integrity of the nutrient, but also to help the delivery of it as well. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. and then there's also so you can take some you can take things that help support the immune system, upregulate the immune system. You can also take things that help to kill pathogens as well when you're going back into your community. Right. Um, so things like echinacea um, are you know good antimicrobials. Um, so, you know, kind of, if you're taking kind of one of each one of those things, you're kind of covering all your bases. Okay. Excellent. And then of course, a good quality brands, because uh, the way most people, you know, and I think that's what you're talking about, the liposomal is, is, you know, one of the, one of my things about, you know, why it is that uh, I prescribe specific nutrients over other nutrients is because of the way that they're made. And making sure that they're uh, handled from all the way from growth to plant to process, that you're maintaining and getting the nutrients that you're looking for um, when, when, when you do that. So 
um, quality is huge and, and how companies do that is really, really important too. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you can spend a lot of money on vitamins and not get anything out of them because, you know, the, that, that point that you made is very important, how it's grown, processed, how it's encapsulated. If it's in a capsule, that's not going to dissolve in the part of your GI tract where it needs to dissolve in order to be absorbed. Right. Um, it's really important. And, and so my advice to people is if you're going to get vitamins, it's good to go to someone that knows nutrition, a nutritionist that um, knows, um, you know, knows about different supplements or someone like you who can tell you what, good su what supplements are good and what aren't good. Because frankly, the best supplements aren't sold in stores. No, no, they're in your, they're in your doctor's office. Exactly. Your health care so, practitioner. Your health care practitioner's office, yes. Um, exactly. So if you want to spend your money wisely, it would benefit you to see someone to co consult with someone that can guide you. Right. You know, honestly, I don't think either one of us would carry nutrition if it weren't a, such an important factor, you know? Uh, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, I mean, I don't, I'm pretty sure you do as much as I do. We, you know, is, is that every, if I go with a new company, I vet that company out, you know, and I talk to the person who is making the, the uh, formulas, you know, or whatever, whatever uh, support they have, like the biochemist. I, I know with a, with a probiotic that I use, I talk to the chemist, you know, and who, who does the biochemistry in that. And, and I want, I want to know, so how are you doing that? And what is the process? And is it hot? Is it cold processed? Is it when it's hot processed to a certain point? Is it a certain temperature? Does it kill it? Have you measured it before and after? Have you, if a probiotic, have you measured it before and after literally coming out of, you know, in stool? So, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot every time you get it. And, and I think like yourself, I don't use one company for every nutrient because I don't feel like they, I feel like some companies do really well in this area and some companies do really well in this area, yes. you know? And then of course, then there's also the factor is that everybody is different. And as we talked about in our epigenetics on the last video, the, that's a huge factor as well because you and I are going to muscle test, you know, in, uh, in, in, in just seeing how the body responds to a particular nutrient, whether it can utilize that nutrient or not. You know, sometimes, especially when I'm doing things like a, some type of an adrenal support, sometimes people need, sometimes they need, uh, you know, um, um, some hormone support with the adrenals. Sometimes they need uh, actual protomorphogen of the gland. Sometimes they just need the B vitamin boost. So, you know, all those things are so important when they're getting the nutrients and, and uh, that, that, you know, little sidetrack is, is that not every vitamin is, is worthy vitamin. Yes, that's absolutely true. I mean, I, you know, for different basic nutrients, I may have three companies for that, that I use their nutrients because what, not everybody is going to, uh, that, that one company is not going to work for everybody. Exactly. Yeah, and I try them. If I it's a new company, I I'll take them. Right. I'll take them and see if I think they work. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, as well as yeah. So um, yeah, the type of nutrient you get is important if you don't want to waste your money and you want to get. There's two things: wasting your money, and then and there's also the aspect of helping you. Right. Like, why, why take a nutrient if it's not going to help you? You're you know talking about the liver like we did in our last video. The liver has to clear those nutrients. Right. You keep start pouring, you know, a bunch of nutrients into the body, particularly ones that your body can't break down, and your liver is going to get uh, overtaxed by having to deal with that. Right. I can't tell you how many times that I've experienced, as I know you have, is you know, a new patient coming in with a box of supplements, and it's like, a, first of all, let's just take you off of all the supplements and give your body a break. Oh my God, you know, like it's almost a panic moment because they feel like that that's what's helping them, but literally, a lot of people will feel better after a very short period of time of going off everything. Yep. And then getting the body what it needs, and, and that's the thing about, I actually think that this is, a, 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 this topic is a, it, it is a conversation that we should definitely have and record because there's so much knowledge uh, and understanding behind 
uh, nutrition and how the body utilizes nutrition that would, I think, be so helpful for people. Yeah. So I think we're, our point on this one is make sure that you're not flushing it down the toilet because you're just buying expensive, flushing your money down the toilet um, right. and, and making sure that it works, you know, that it works right. for your body. And, um, and yes, and take and kind of tagging it back to the immune system and going back into the world and yeah. Right, right, right. So, you know, reach out to your healthcare practitioner who can help you sort that out. Right. Um, okay, well, fantastic. I think that those are really good tips um, uh, for really making sure that it, ahead of time that you're doing the things that you need to do for your immune system um, to be able to just reintegrate into our environment. Right, great. Okay, good. Excellent. So until next time. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Did you change it? Are you, you, you can't, so you can, you know, I have a, I have a funny feeling here is you can't see me, can you? I can. You can? I can. Well, I'm very curious to see how this video records it because I have a feeling it's not recording because when the last one finished record, finished um, downloading, it tweaked my thing. And now I don't, I don't think, I don't think it recorded. I don't oh. think that was Huh? Let's do it again. We do. I think we do because right now all I see is IHC and it's black. I see that. Yes. And what should it and what should be up there? Your video, your image. And so I think mine, I think that I don't oh, mine was up there. My but, image was up there. Right. Until I just ended the recording, right? Right. And I don't see it downloading. Usually it pops up and starts downloading. I don't see where it downloaded. Yeah, we're gonna need to do that one over. All right. Um, I can't do it now. That's okay. Yep. I'll uh, upload the epigenetic one and, um, okay. you know, and share that, share that uh, uh, with you. Um, all right. I wonder if there's a way to retrieve it. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm working at that and I see, you know, where I started the recording and, and I ended the recording. And as soon as I ended it, it usually goes to a, um, you know, a download of it, and I'm not seeing that download, but I, I will look for it. Okay. Or like when you hang up, I'll just stay on for a few minutes and see okay. if I can't find it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. All right. Love you to pieces. Love you. Have a good weekend. Hey, thanks. You too. You hammer and a mom. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I will I'll give some mom some love, but, um, yeah. She, uh, I've still, I'm still just putting off talking to her about that. That's fine. She's slowly breaking herself in. Right. And yeah. And I'm not going to say anything to Shelly because Shelly will call her. Shelly's got to, you know, be the person that kind of gets her nose in there. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, Lisa, I have a feeling that somehow you were changed to the host while I'm looking at this. So what should I do? Um, I'm not wondering if you, when you end the meeting, if it downloads on your computer. So, so if I X out of here. Yep. All right. Just look to see if it pops up on um, what it says. Uh, it says um, it's a file. It's a file that says Kathy Goldstein's personal meeting room. And then okay. it has um, dates on it. So it would ju it'll just pop up automatically and, and, and start downloading. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's asking me, so I'm gonna leave the meeting. Yeah, you'll disconnect when you leave the meeting. Hey. Hi. Hi. So it's it's telling me there's an update available. So I'm guessing I shouldn't do that. Um. Well. I can do it. I can do it later. Yeah. You don't need to do the update. Okay. So I texted out of that, and the only I the only thing I see is just the Zoom. Okay. Logo. Okay. All right. We'll just re-record it. Okay. All right. 
All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay, I'll talk to you. Okay, bye.
Hi, Ellen. It's Kathy Goldstein. How are you? Hey, Kathy. I'm good. I'm good. 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 Is that? Did I catch you at a good time? Or do you need yeah. some time? Do you need? You want me to call back? Nope. Nope. This is good. Uh, I might have to run to the bathroom. And then it's all <laughs> out for real life. I have no time Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Well, let me know. <laughs> no, I, hey, listen, you know, it's a, that, it, this is not beyond an acupuncturist. Next thing we'll know, okay, oh, well, how is that going? What color is it? What does it smell like? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so just let me know what you need to do. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, um, and talk here and figure out what, um, what we need to to figure out for you know how I can how I can uh, help with putting on a symposium here. Well, we sent out a um, I don't know if you've done it a survey uh, of all the speakers we had on the schedule for this year to kind of get a ranking of what was the most interest because we're not sure virtually we can do three tracks. Sure. Day, so right. Um, so you were in the top half. Um, okay. There's definitely a lot of interest in your class. So okay. if there's a way to still have it be a certificate class, um, yeah, I you could have, mm. you could have two days. Okay. Uh, three, six, nine, twelve hours. Okay. And then you were also seeing what I can do in nine hours as well. Yeah, if, okay. if you think you could do it at nine, then we can add another yeah. I, on the schedule, but it's not a, Yeah, I think, I think that, you, yeah, you, well, without the, I mean, I can do, de I can do demonstrations, but I can't do, I can't do practice, uh, you know, everybody's in their home by themselves, so um, that does cut down on a lot of time. The other thing is, too, is, is that it's kind of it would give some, it would give people a um, like a I don't know if I can do a certificate. Uh, I would have to really think about that because what it would enable them to do is it would enable them to obviously be able to go to you know a, 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 a live class where they can actually get hands on. It's definitely a hands on kind of technique, um, but I I think that. Um, I don't know what, what kind of certificate. What, so, what kind of certificate could I give them for something like that? Well, if I so first of all, let's talk about with virtual. Um, not everybody is home alone. Okay. You know, and so yes. Um, sure. I have a partner I live with. I sure. could drive for him for a portion of it if I knew. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. Yeah. So, so come with. Okay, so that's an interesting concept. It's an interesting concept because um, if we did, uh, if you're talking the difference between a webinar versus a Zoom versus whatever, where where I could actually see all of the different you know people who are taking the class, but that could be pretty. That could be huge. Um, I, I kind of like that though. Like if someone were having problems or had questions, because if I'm thinking about live. If I'm thinking about live, I obviously I can't see everyone, uh, you know, and I do walk around the room and I and I usually have other people who help me and uh, and then if someone has a question, they can ask me a question, but it also could be a question that I could answer for everyone, not, but it would be really good if it, you know, because I was thinking practitioner to practitioner, but you're right, it doesn't need to be practitioner to practitioner, it can be practitioner to subject, you know, um, where they're practicing on a, on a subject. Huh, I kind of like that idea. Um, okay. Well, that would, that would add the time back on for being able to do, uh, you know, the practice part of that. Because, so the, the other thing is, and it would be good if I could see them. It would be good. So even if I even if I had to scroll through, you know, ten pages, um, I 
it would, you know, I, it, it would still enable me to, to, to see them even in their own little block. Um, or if someone's raising their hand. Yeah, I know with, with classes when I used to teach high tea, you wouldn't necessarily uh, have the same amount of people in the class. You would have the same amount of people in the class. Exactly. Exactly. panelists so that they show up in the panelist yeah. room. Uh-huh. So we need to talk about the limits on that, but um, I think he would be able to do that. Uh, he also could, you know, if you have a demo, you could pre-record that and play it. Sure, and I have, I have plenty of, yeah, I have plenty of demos that I can, that I can, um, pre, you know, that I do already have recorded that I would just, you know, grab from. Um, because I agree with you, it would be uh, easier for me to, to, I could show a few things with someone live, but it is much better to have a video and talk about the video. Um, and there are some things that I would want to do if we were gonna do, do that type of, type of thing. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, and so what's the interest level that, that as far as, you know, it, uh, can I, as far as like the biomed part or the safety part, because, you know, I can talk the science part of that and add the biomed. I can talk, you know, safety as far as who not to do uh, these t types of treatments on and things to, you know, look for. Anything, any, like, do, can I, should I skip some of that to bring it down to the nine hours? What are your thoughts there? Um, you know, I, I, I'm this. I think if we, if you want to have, uh, I don't know how many of what you would do, um, people like biomed, they like safety, that's where uh, classes, they're not a requirement uh, this year, right? Um, necessarily, but people don't mind getting them. Sure. So, um, we can divide from CEUs, I don't think it matters as much as okay. Okay. Um, the certificate. Gotcha. So, okay. Whatever you feel like is the most important information, um, um, and what do you feel like they need to earn a certificate, because I think the certificate was was the big you know, part. People like to be able to say they had the certificate or something. Okay. So you think it needs twelve hours for that. I, you know, I, I think, I think so. Um, but let me not, you know, I. It, having had a chance to talk to you knowing what we're looking for being a, i didn't i did not consider the possibility of being able to have it set up more like a zoom meeting where i could see everyone um and the requirement that the person who they're working with does not have to be a practitioner they also do not need to or preferably not in the room the whole time but to be able to grab that person when saying okay we're going to take you know a 10 minute break when we get when we come back bring bring your person you know? Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. We can have a preset time. For exactly. Them exactly. You know, I, I, I have somebody built in in my house, my class, but, um, right. and which I hope I do, but, you know, I don't know. It's like every conference, I'm so busy with the solo stuff. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's interesting, but I think most people could. Um, possibly they have a friend at that point, uh, they would feel comfortable enough to have in their house. Sure, um, yeah. Or they had to live with their parents or they yeah. live with a spouse, yeah. you know, or somebody they could grab. How long do you think that portion would take? Yeah, well, it would be dispersed throughout. So that's the thing is, is that it would be nice if it were someone living in their house or someone who is willing to kind of hang out, you know, while while the class is going on. And if they don't live there, watch a few movies or whatever. Um, because, you know, I, I think you're right. If, if certainly if we are, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that somebody is not comfortable with somebody coming, I mean, coming into their house. And you know, uh, and of course we're outside of just Florida, which has been way more flexible. There are some states that are so ridiculously rigid, but 
Um, so I, I, you're right. I would have to do a schedule. I would have, because it's a, you know, it would be like a um, lecture, demo, practice, lecture, demo, practice, lecture, demo, practice, right? So I would have to, maybe I could even change that up a little bit where I can consolidate the practice a little bit more. Um, but, and then also, are you talking about um, doing that pretty much at the same time that we were gonna do the um, same hours where I'm actually doing like three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon on two consecutive days? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're okay. Okay. So it's an ongoing. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, Ellen. No, that's all right. I was just. Yeah. Yeah. With the way we're doing it. Yes. Um, we can do the whole thing pre-recorded and people would watch it at their own discretion. Right. That's right. That's what I meant. The, the purchase later part. So we wouldn't act. So part of, part of getting a certificate is also, I think that's what I like about the live part is that, is that, you know, it's me being able to look and see, you know, and so, that I would, I would have to think of how that would work to get a certificate unless it were something like, you know, um, you're, you're almost there, but then show up for this class and maybe it's a, I don't know. I, I, I think that it's the monitor. Yeah, I think you, you, could, know. you could, we could take out the practice part um, of the class and say, you know, live lecture, practice, and then we certificate. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Okay. 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 I like I like that as an option. You're good. You're a good thinker. Um, okay. And then um, I think the hour breaks are probably better than the two hour breaks, being that I think people would rather, uh, especially if they're at home, that they'd rather be able to just be done than um, you know yeah. hang out in their house for a couple of hours. So. Okay. Yeah, All right. Especially people in a different part of the country where it's nice instead of really hot. Right. So, we're, yes. Yeah. <laughs> True. Okay. All right. So then let me process through it and figure out like how I would write it out and see if I can't, um, you know, bring in the certificate part, especially because I'm, I'm, I'm I also would like to, um, uh, you know, see how that would roll into someone being able to take some of the other courses that are like practitioner treating other practitioners. And so I want to make sure it rolls into that and that, um, and that, yeah, and they have all that flexibility. So um, let's circle back. And so that means that if people. I have to think of how to write it up because if, exactly. it's, if the requirement for the certificate is that they have somebody to practice on, we'll have to. Very clear. Yes. Um, 
show. Yes, yeah, and that I'm actually seeing it. But and the whole point, like you're talking about on the Tai Chi, is is that I can scroll through and say, okay, you know, let's circle back to this part where everybody gets the information. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess then the other, uh, and so then at that point you'll have <clears throat> you you'll have. Um, only one person doing a class at a time? Uh, like I'm trying to think about how many people that would actually be on, on a class if you're, obviously yeah, you can't do five. To, you'd have to figure out what's manageable. Um, yeah, class size is limited. Uh, so you'd have to Yeah, honestly, I think I have more flexibility. I have more flexibility on Zoom. I can see, I can definitely do way more people on Zoom, um, you know, because if people are practicing for 15 minutes, it doesn't take me long to pick up, pick up different things. And, you know, I've got a whole page. I can also have another, you know, another set of eyes on it to, to pick up something as well. Um, and we may be able to work at where you have control of, you want to, uh, like I know when I'm on meetings, they're little tiles. Right, um, exactly. And if you're in speaker view, you can actually click through your looking. Right. So there are ways they could, if you want to zoom in on somebody, they could maybe set that to get a little bit Right, right, right. And then you have to know how to get off them and get back to standing. Right. Because the, depends on how big your screen is and that kind of thing. Yep, so, yep. This will take some, Lauren Brown. Oh, you know, I actually just heard from someone that asked about me to them um, and that he was going to. Okay, maybe that's how. And then I think it went through, and then I think he talked to my sister, and then I think, he, you know, he asked because our last name is the same. Um, so then he asked Shelly, you know, do you, it, do you know Kathy Goldstein? So that must have gone through through you to, to Shelly. So, um, so that would be, so I should not sign up with him in any way until we figure out what we're doing with FSLMA? Uh, I would think so. Yeah. Unless, you know, you just have to keep this class out of contract, out of the contract and make sure you're, uh, Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would rather. Uh, the particular class is probably not going to go with him. Although he said he, I, you know, he said he would like to have the details out. He said he would be happy to, you know, uh, you know, post the class and then have the class really they don't have to travel and they can still get the benefits of it yeah. I actually think that it's going to be a great turnout personally yeah 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 so how many tracks are you going to try to run at the same time we're just going to do two okay um we thought about three but it's a lot yeah we're just going to do two some of the other classes we're going to offer webinars like a Saturday webinar later in the year or a day later in the year sometime um okay Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I actually uh, that that's pretty good because I wasn't I had looked at the description as a, a, a little way back and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to work on the description for for when you you know start 
get when it starts getting closer in advertising and talking about it and like doing videos to promote it and stuff like that. Um, it definitely yeah. did, didn't have a great descriptor. Um, but I think you probably yeah, well, I think tweaked it. it. Really will be ready to do some interviews and, um, get that ready for okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Probably. Well, can hold some attention for that long with uh, <laughs> you know talking to myself mostly right um, you know I do I do a lot of uh, webinars so it's a good platform for me I'm comfortable very comfortable with it so that's good um, all right so let's circle back um, today's Friday let me get back to you uh, really no later than next what what do you need next month Wednesday next Monday what do you need Monday I know you're trying, I mean, I can't imagine I'm not going, I mean, I will do something. Um, I think it'll just be a matter of, you know, how many hours, what I can, you know, what we can figure out. I love your idea of, you know, seeing the tiles so that I can, uh, I can scan. And I love the idea that, you know, if they want their certificate, they have to have someone to practice on and they have to have their video on so that I can see them. I mean, these are all things that are going to be uh, um, uh, really applicable for, for being able to actually give a certificate for an online course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that uh, I'm talking with Dylan. I don't have a date yet, but sometime next week, uh, the board, um, the committee is having a meeting with him again and we're probably going to finalize the agreement. Um, so sometime up into the week, okay. week, if you can get back to me, but I will ask him about. Okay. Sure, I do. I do too. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. sounds good all right Ellen I think uh, I got some processing to do and I and and I love your ideas you're very creative and and I'm uh, in options you know so we can we'll figure out how to make it work all right, good. Thank you. of course absolutely right. um, and I'll talk to you next so, week yeah okay I'll probably call you before that okay yep yeah that's yeah, fine too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I can't get to you right away, I'll, I'll get back to you pretty quick. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. All right. Uh huh. Bye bye.